Hello, thank you for joining me. We're here to talk about the world of small business today and the role that small business has in the American economy. We're working from the Feral et al 2019 text and we're focused on chapter five today. So let's get going. Okay, we're just gonna share the screen here and here we go. Right. So the chapter is titled Small Business, Entrepreneurship and Franchising. The learning objectives look at definitions for entrepreneurship and small business and the importance of small business in the American economy. We look at the advantages and disadvantages of small business ownership. And then we move to how do you go about starting a small business? We look at the demographic technological and economic trends associated with the future of small business. And then we end the chapter with an explanation as to why many large businesses are actually trying to think small. Okay, so entrepreneurship, what is it? Well, it's a movement and it's accelerating and um, many new smaller businesses are emerging as well, and we can recognize these as micro entrepreneurs. Technology is facilitating the way. So uh, regardless of the size of a business, um, the internet has opened the world. Uh, so uh, even a small business can be a global business. And uh, technology is also enabling other mechanisms such as podcasting and social media distributions. All right. Now, a growing trend in entrepreneurship is social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is focused on social change. And an excellent example we can put forward here is the Grameen Bank. The Grameen Bank is an Indian organization that started in the 1980s um, and because a need was recognized in uh, amongst people living in poverty in India that even a very small amount of money loaned to an individual so that they could start a business of their own has a, an ex, has a significant impact for the community. And so Grameen Bank started uh, loaning amounts as small as $300 to women in the villages. And this enabled the women to put food on the table for their children, send their daughters to school and uh, effectively um, contribute to community development. We've got many examples of great entrepreneurs over the years and table 5.1 gives you um, uh, uh, identi identify some of these highly visible um, entrepreneurs. Some are still with us, some are not. All right, so what is a small business? It's independently owned and operated. It's not dominant in the competitive area. It probably ha employs less than 500 people. Um, and, and it is about for example, um, identifying a problem that can be solved. So small business owners and operators are problem solvers. Now the government recognizes the important role of small business in the community, and therefore they have a government division referred to as the Small Business Administration. Now, while this is a federal government division, it actually has localized offices. So for example, in Nashville, Tennessee, there is a small business administration offer, office. And at this office, small business owners and operators can get assistance with regards to management and finances. So um, a very important part of operating a small business in the current context is dealing with the coronavirus. And uh, the Small Business Administration has taken a leading role to assist small businesses trying to navigate this precarious global pandemic that we currently are experiencing. 
So the importance of small business in the American economy is recognised in that small businesses represent more than 99% of employers. Um, small businesses are generating 63% of new jobs and small businesses hire about 37% of very specialised technical workers. Small businesses also produce patents at a prolific rate, um, 16 times more patents per employee than large patenting organisations. And small businesses employ nearly half of all private sector employees. Small businesses also pay 42% of the total US private payroll. Okay. So table 5.3 here gives you summary of the number of organizations, the number of small businesses that employ these various uh, levels of um, workers. So 60, nearly 67% of small businesses are employing less than 20 employees. So the role of small business in the American economy is actually really important. More than that, we have to recognize the trend of female entrepreneurship and female owned small businesses. More than 9 million businesses worldwide are owned by women. These businesses include professional services as well as retail operations. Uh, maybe other service organizations such as uh, administrative services. Minority owned businesses are a fast growing trend as well and they represent um, nearly 30% of small businesses. And black entrepreneurship, for example, has uh, these networks emerging such as Sister Biz, which is a global network for black women entrepreneurs specifically. So in other words, it's about black sisters coming together to collaborate and help each other, lifting up each other in the global business network. Okay, so we've said that uh, small businesses generate about 63% of new jobs and 82% uh, of small businesses employ less than 500 workers. Uh, small businesses are highly innovative. And while many large organizations actually started as small businesses, as they grow up, maybe the innovation levels decrease. And, and that's because small businesses are more agile, in the way that they make decisions and take risks. We'll come back to that. Many industries attract small businesses, such as retailing, wholesaling, service industries. Service industries represent 80% of US jobs. Even manufacturing and technology industries attract small businesses, as does the sharing economy. Now, let's be more specific here. What we're talking about is that every single Uber driver is a small business operator because they are not an employee. They are a contractor. Same with Airbnb rental operators. They are small business owners and operators. Um, and they are participants in the gig economy. Each Uber drive that they do, each uh, Airbnb rental that they undertake. This is a gig. This is referred to as a gig. And as, a, as um, because they're not considered employees, these contractors uh, do not receive benefits, which is a highly controversial point in the sharing economy, especially in the face of coronavirus. So here's a bit of a blurb about Airbnb. And Airbnb was founded by Brian Chesky and Joe Jiba, and they were looking for cheap accommodation uh, and they couldn't find it. So they solved the problem. They recognized the problem, they solved the problem. They recognized that 
there was an untapped market for less expensive homier lodgings and Airbnb was formed. Initially, they targeted conference attendees, business travelers, and now they are operating in 34,000 cities around the world. Now, it's, there, there are critics of Airbnb. For example, when um, permanent residents in, in a high rise apartment building, for example, have to deal with uh, uh, short term renters, Airbnb um, um, customers coming in and out of the building. Maybe they're having parties and the permanent residents don't appreciate that. So the the traffic associated with Airbnb, not, not just the vehicle traffic, I mean the customer traffic associated with Airbnb can be disruptive to a community. And so many cities around the world, including in America, have introduced regulations that um, might even discourage Airbnb rentals. Okay, now let's come back to the advantages and disadvantages of small business ownership. The advantages include the independent nature of small business ownership. The advantages also include the flexibility and focus that can be achieved with small business ownership. And the reputation of the owner definitely is reflective of the small business itself. So small business basically trades on its reputation. So to do better for themselves than they could do by remaining with an employer, um, uh, this is a reason for, this independence is a reason for people going out and starting their own business. They get to choose who they work for, when and where they work, and how they set up their um, family around that. So that maybe it turns into a family business. Um, many, let's just go back to that point, many um, at-home mothers uh, have deliberately left their employment, their employer, to raise a family. And in that context, maybe they build up a business that um, can accommodate their at-home situation. Hmm. Mummy entrepreneurs we're referring to there. Okay. So another advantage of small business ownership is that um, it's less costly in terms of wages and rent and utilities um, than, than a larger business. And small businesses can actually outsource internal processes such as bookkeeping or maybe marketing, even legal services. They don't have to have that in house. They can uh, contract other businesses, maybe other small businesses, small, small business owners and operators. And with regards to family, maybe family members may be commandeered to come and help at certain times. And, you know, essentially that's free labor or minimal cost at least. Um, now the small size of a small business enables fast market adaptation you can see a change or a trend in the marketplace. And because you're operating a small business where the people with authority, the decision makers are very close to the ground floor of the business, then they can adjust and therefore capture the opportunity that they see in the marketplace. Okay. Uh, then in terms of focus, small business owners can focus efforts specifically on a narrow market niche, and they can monitor the changes in that market niche to ensure that they stay on point in meeting the needs of that identified market niche. And larger organizations may well overlook such niches because uh, maybe the niche is not large enough for um, uh, a large organization to be bothered. Therefore, there's the opportunity for the small business owner. And because of the capacity of small business owner, op owner operators, 
um, to focus on these narrow niches, they develop um, a reputation for quality and service in that particular area. Now, the disadvantages, high stress, high failure rate, um, uh, lack of resources, lack of capital, inexperience in business or management, maybe incompetence, uh, maybe denial of that incompetence, maybe inability to cope with growth. So many small businesses um, will be uh, striving to achieve a growth curve. Um, but if the supply side systems are not set up, a small business going into a steep growth curve is actually going to be threatened by that growth. And therefore, it's growth in the small business arena is one of the reasons that small businesses fail. Another reason that small businesses fail is the lack of planning. So let's talk about each of these now. High stress, right? Likely to provide living for the owner, but not necessarily much more than that, right? So the, um, the small business may uh, basically provide the small business owner with a job. And if the small business owner has bought the small business, then maybe what they've bought themselves is a job. Um, unlike when uh, an employee works for an organisation, uh, a small business owner is responsible for any employee problems, any lack of equipment issues, uh, any um, uh, increases in overhead such as rent or even changing market demand and the adjustment of the small business operation. And so in, in this sense, small business ownership is actually quite stressful. And the owner is often uh, um, managing the business full time as well. So they may well be um, completely consumed with the daily operational demands of the business. And so they don't get to think strategically. They're just operating reactively and that's expensive. And because small business owners are typically the operators, the management in the small business, as well as the owners, then uh, they are responsible for the organisation as a whole and therefore this multitasking can actually result in long hours. And so while some business, small business owners might say that they went into business uh, so that they could work their own hours, be their own boss, it turns out that they work more and they can't have a holiday, they can't leave the business because they're ultimately responsible. So there's this high failure rate within small businesses. Half of small businesses fail within the first five years. Part of the reason for that is under capitalization. Too many entrepreneurs think that all they need is money to get started, but that's not accurate. They need resources, they need skills, they need support. And so without this level of um, facilitation, then the business falls over. Um, managerial inexperience and incompetence is another reason that businesses fail. Just because the entrepreneur has a brilliant vision does not mean that he or she can carry it out. Uh, there is an inability to cope with growth as well. Like I was saying earlier, a steep growth curve can put the business in trouble and uh, growth requires um, to meet the level of growth involved with a steep growth curve. That requires investment, investment in the systems, time and money investment in the system. Um, uh, and uh, small business owners and operators may well not be good at delegating and growth may require delegation, um, may require 
the small business owner to give up a degree of authority. And maybe some small business owners are not up to that. They don't trust their workers enough. Maybe they don't have the right workers on board to be able to delegate effectively. Now, some small businesses start very small. They start from scratch. And, um, and this is why small business owners and operators are, mm, um, they, they have to deal with many demands. They may struggle to get the business off the ground. They may struggle to attract customers in the first instance. Um, but an advantage is that they don't have any rules that a franchise agreement may incur. So how do you start a business? Well, you can buy a franchise. That's one option. Um, but maybe maybe you don't have the capital to start to buy a franchise agreement. And so you have to start your own. You start with your vision, your business concept, the general idea that you have. You devise a strategy. You make informed decisions with regards to the structure of the ownership of the business, with regards to financing and capital. Now, are you going to start the business from scratch or are you going to acquire an existing business that may well have an active customer base? Or maybe you're going to buy a franchise. These are all decisions that you have to make about starting a business. Whatever you do, you have to do your homework. And the document that um, uh, showcases the business concept, the business vision, the operational intent of the business is referred to as the business plan. Now, the value of the business plan is not actually in the document. The value of the business plan is in the process of analysis. So it's, an, it's a very important dynamic document that is regularly updated in line with market changes, of course. Uh, okay, so the business plan explains the business concept. It presents the uh, analysis of the homework, sorry, the analysis of the competitors and um, the analysis of customers. Uh, and it establishes a strategy for um, sufficient funding. As I said, it's a dynamic document, and so it's going to be revised uh, at regular intervals. In Chapter 4, we talked about the different forms of business ownership, such as sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. And um, what else do we need to concern ourselves when we're starting a small business is, of course, money. Uh, a small business owner um, will typically put up the cash or um, they themselves will obtain the capital that is required to finance their business idea. Now, this is where the Small Business Administration comes in because there's funding available from the Small Business um, Administration. Or maybe you're going to go to the bank. So if we want to talk about equity financing, then this is where the owner is using their personal assets rather than borrowing bank funds or some other from some other outside source to get going. Uh, small business owners and operators might collaborate with venture capitalists as well to fund their business idea. And dealing with venture capitalists requires that the owner shares the profit with those that are choosing to invest. Now, if they're going to get a loan from the Small Business Administration or maybe their bank, um, then, uh, uh, then this is a good idea. But of course, uh, the business has to be viable for this external funding to be approved and allocated. Uh, another way around this is to look to family and friends as sources for funding. So whatever collateral a small business owner can bring to the table um, might be used for debt financing. Personal property might be put up as collateral, maybe a second mortgage on the house, maybe a line of credit is established with a financial institution so that the operational expenses of the business can be um, attributed to that line of credit. 
maybe trade credit will be set up where you uh, the business is allowed to um, uh, take possession of necessary goods and services and then pay at a later date or maybe an installment agreement is made and then bartering where small business owners and operators might trade between themselves the necessary goods and services uh, required and essentially support each other in their business endeavors so we need to decide um, about starting from scratch or buying an existing business when we are setting up our business. When we're buying an existing business, we have the advantage of a built-in network of customers as well as suppliers, maybe distributors as well, so it reduces some of the risk. One of the disadvantages, sorry, one of the disadvantages of acquiring a business when you're starting your small business is that you're also acquiring any problems that that business already has. We mentioned franchising. So franchising is a license to sell another business's um, products or maybe to use a brand name or maybe both. So the organization that is selling the franchise opportunity is referred to as the franchiser. The small business that is purchasing the franchise agreement is referred to as the franchisee. Franchising, just like any other form of business, has advantages and disadvantages. The advantages is that you're buying into an established system. You're also buying um, training and support to make that system uh, operate in an optimal manner you're buying into um, a brand name that already has a reputation. And uh, there are standardized procedures as well as uh, quality um, of goods and services within this franchise agreement. Maybe there's national and or local advertising included in the franchise agreement. Maybe there's financial assistance on offer. So when you're buying a franchise, you are buying a supposedly proven system. It's not without its problems. Um, but one of the advantages is that the franchise network will be able to achieve uh, economies of scale with their purchasing because they're buying for the entire franchise network, not rather than just one friend, one small business owner buying for themselves. Um, so there's a greater chance of success, supposedly, with franchising. Disadvantages, it's going to cost you money. You want to buy into this system? It's, you're going to have to pay a fee, and sometimes the, these can be quite large fees. We flagged standardization as an advantage of franchising, but standardization can also be a disadvantage because you're not able to customize as you might if you were an individual independent small business owner. Um, for example, there may be a, a narrow product line and you might have limited freedom in terms of decision making associated with that product line. Here's examples of fast growing franchises, franchise systems that you can buy. Uh, Dunkin Donuts at the top of this list in terms of the fastest growing um, and then uh, another list uh, for the hottest franchises that of course changes from year to year. Alrighty. So where do small business managers go for help? There's many entrepreneurial training net programs available, for example, through the Small Business Administration, but also, for example, through Chambers of Commerce and other business networks um, available locally or even globally, such as this Black Sister Network that we flagged earlier. There are national publications such as INC and Entrepreneur, where small business owners and operators can go for help. We've already flagged the Small Business Administration and there's various uh, um, 
units within the Small Business Administration Division of the Federal Government that offers different types of help. And other small businesses can collaborate together to support each other. So here's an example of a very successful brand that started as a small business and has grown up into now a national brand. So GT Dave is a kombucha, kombucha um, product. Kombucha is a fermented green tea and kombucha has many healing benefits, many health benefits. And GT Dave, the entrepreneur, believed that um, kombucha helped his mother beat breast cancer. And so he started his small business called Millennium Products. And Millennial Products now sells kombucha throughout the Whole Foods network. Um, so Dave is a problem solver. Um, now, in 2010, they were found to have too high of an alcohol content. And so they had to reformulate the recipe and, and rebrand the product. But that repositioning now means that they are found in many more stores than just Whole Foods with uh, an annual sales of $346 million. Now, demographic trends are very relevant to the world of small business. Demographic trends include baby boomers that arrived, you know, they were uh, born after the end of World War II, and they were the biggest population boom in history to date when they arrived. Um, and so, Baby boomers consist of 75 million Americans and baby boomers are now at retirement age. And so baby boomers have, um, they have spurred along many trends in the marketplace, such as to do with housing, with, um, you know, the suburbs grew up around the baby boomers. And then the baby boomers had babies. <laughs> and so um, gerber baby food, for example, uh, became um, a, a brand that grew up because of this demographic trend. Um, then as the baby boomers advanced in years, you know, they, they realised when their kids were teenagers and young adults that they needed that they were growing <laughs> older and fatter and so brands like Reebok, Reebok and Adidas, Adidas uh, came up in the marketplace. Anyway now that they're at retirement age um, brands like AARP are serving this demographic very well. So when we recognize a demographic trend such as the baby boomers or now we look at the Millennials and Gen Y, uh, which are a bigger demographic than the baby boomers, then we can recognise um, market opportunities associated with these demographic trends. Another trend, another demographic trend is the increasing number of immigrants. Immigrants represent over 17% of the American workforce and they provide another untapped market for small business. Specifically, the Latinx population is the biggest and fastest growing minority segment in the US. And by 2045, it's predicted that um, the majority of uh, the American population will be uh, of minority descent. And so the majority will be of a minority and that is a huge business opportunity. Now just like we look at demographic trends, we also need to look at technological and economic trends. The internet arrived in around about 1994 and the, the internet enabled disintermediation. It enabled manufacturers to go direct to consumers. This reduced costs for manufacturers and um, 
it enabled greater access for the consumers. And it, here we are in 2020 and the internet continues to provide new opportunities, especially in the COVID context, right? Online ordering, curbside pickup. Um, we uh, another economic trend is the increase in service exports. So uh, tangible goods exports um, has been historically important, but now service exports and the expansion of service organisations into the international markets is very much a trend for small business owners and operators. And when we are in economic downturn, such as currently in 2020, we are in an economic recession. There is um, both threat and opportunity in this context. Now, the good news is, is that small business owner, owners and operators, because they have the advantage of agility, they can react quickly to market changes and they can keep their market orientation, their customer orientation high with regards to what their customers needs are. They can do that better than large organizations and therefore they have the advantage. Now deregulation of um, traditionally highly regulated industries such as the energy market, for example, also offers market opportunities. So global energy markets are valued in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Deregulation invites competition. So it's an opportunity to enter the market. Okay, so I have mentioned several times today that um, small business small businesses have the advantage of agility small businesses have the advantage advantage of being able to react in a timely manner to market changes and so in this sense large firms seek to emulate the small business operation um, they may even downsize or what's referred to as right sizing to reduce the management layers so that they can achieve a faster decision making process. And ideally, this will make the larger organization more flexible and more innovative. Now, larger organizations may well seek to employ entrepreneurs. And what does that mean? Well, instead of an entrepreneur who owns their own business, and um, is highly innovative in whatever market space they're operating in. An entrepreneur is somebody who's highly innovative, but operating within a larger organization. Okay, so um, we have examples here of uh, Seco Designs, and this is about uh, women, uh, Ugandan women um, who have Seco Designs have the primary motive of sending Ugandan women to college. They do that by selling artisan footwear, bags, sandals, and other products that are handmade by Ugandan women. And so this is an example of a social entrepreneurship organization. They use entrepreneurial principles to achieve social change. And the franchise model actually works well within this context. So now let's look at what are the characteristics of uh, entrepreneurs. We can say that entrepreneurs are innovative, risk takers, they are persistent, and they are very friendly. Um, here, I've given you some hyperlinks that will take you through to two different uh, assessments as to your own personal characteristics and how much of an entrepreneurial mindset you do or do not have. So enjoy and thank you for listening. <laughs>